1043, welcome back. Let's talk about money and markets. Bob Thompson joining us on the BT Couch, Category Genuity Wealth Management. Uh, you are the expert when it comes to this sort of thing to provide insight. Uh, what was the catalyst that triggered this market fluctuation in China and then the worldwide event that we saw in the past 24 hours? Right, good good point there, Riaz. There's always a catalyst, and this time it was the Chinese devaluation. And I think when the world looked and said the Chinese have to devalue their money, that means that maybe their economy is not doing as well as a lot of us thought. So people um, took that opportunity to start selling, and then the fear gripped the markets, and the more fear grips the markets, the more people want to sell until it hits the bottom, and that's what we're in the midst of right now. Well, you know, I look at China as a self-contained economy, and then seeing an event like this, and then seeing it spread wor worldwide, investor psychology is obviously key here with fear being the case, but what is the direct impact for Canada and Canadian investors? Right. How the world looks at Canada is, is we, we make stuff for people to build stuff. So we, we copper, zinc, oil. These are what this is what Canada does. We have a lot of other businesses, but that's how the world looks at us. So if the resource markets aren't doing well, people look to sell Canada. And I think that's why our markets have been pretty volatile and the resource sector's done pretty poorly for the last two or three years. And you know, they say history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. And this looks a lot like 1998. In August of 1998, a lot of people don't realize the Canadian stock market was down 20% that month. Then it rebounded and it did extremely well after that. So I think if we look back with historical perspective, we learn things. With something like this that has just taken place, is this a short-term fix that we'll see the markets bounce back up and things will get back to normal? Or is it something where if you are an avid investor, we need to more, pay more attention and, and watch these markets with detail now? I think if you're a long-term investor, it's not something to worry about because market dislocations like we're having now create value and unless we have market events like this you'll never be able to buy undervalued securities so most long-term investors welcome this sort of volatility because it creates situations where you can buy things that you couldn't buy before at the bargain level uh, prices and you know stock market corrections are great because they expose the poor companies and like they say in the market you don't know who's swimming naked until the tide goes out <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's exposed in this one. And whenever we have something like this, there's a positive and there's a negative impact for investors out there. Who has lost out and who could potentially win given what just happened? Right. The people that have lost out, and it's interesting with the Chinese market, all the people came in at the end of the Chinese market and then they leveraged themselves. So this stock market correction has wiped them out. Right? So don't leverage yourself a lot. Don't follow other people's greed because that's how you're going to get hurt. Go against, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. And if you can remember that one thing in investing, you'll do very, very well. And, and you know, there's only so much detail we can cover off in a short segment with investment strategy. Mm -hmm. But if we take things back to Vancouver mm -hmm. and take a look at uh, foreign ownership, what do you see as the impact on the Vancouver real estate market given a correction like this? Will there be one? There's always a correction in the market, and it's interesting because markets can stay overvalued for a long period of time, and then there's a catalyst. There's some catalyst that comes out of left field, or maybe two or three of them that uh, go together that uh, nobody sees, and that's what creates something to happen. So, sure, Vancouver real estate, uh, the real estate market, the stock market, the supermarket, they're all markets, and you try to buy things when they're on sale, and you try not to buy them when they're overpriced. To get the timing right, if you get the timing exactly right, it's more luck than, than uh, common sense. And the timing this morning, seeing the bounce back of markets, mm -hmm. uh, what have you analyzed and what do you anticipate is going to happen in the next week? Sure. Um, the, the, the rebound always happens after after the fear grips the markets like it has right now. So what's going to happen is the mar everything's probably rebounding on the market this morning which is which is great then we're going to start to stabilize people are going to say what's actually undervalued what is overvalued still and then we're going to get some sort of balance in the market and I think if people remember that about the markets they're always in balance just like everything it always comes back it always reverts to the mean it always comes back to a proper balance so we got out of balance um, in the last few days um, now we're going to get back into balance and then the strong will survive and, and the weak will be exposed. All right, and uh, obviously an opportunity if you're on the outside looking in to get involved. BobThompson.ca is your website to find out more on investment strategy. Thanks for coming in and sharing some insight on this one. Thank you. Great.